Welcome to the Edgewonk Journal review number three. This was so far the most interesting review we did and we had to dig very deep into the Traders Journal. We hope you enjoyed the review as much as we did. The Edgewonk user also sent some comments with his review request. He said, according to my analysis, my biggest issue is that my profits are not big enough. I don't know if I'm placing my stops too far, but I think that this is the problem because I never seem to reach my profit target and then end up closing my trades for well below my targets. I don't know what to do because my entries seem to be good. The trades seem to work well, but always reverse and never get to my targets. So now let's dig into this journal and see how we can help this trader move forward. The first step when analyzing a trading journal is to analyze the adherence to the trading rules, because even if a trader has a potentially well-performing trading system, if the trader is not able to trade with discipline and execute the rules, the system will not perform well. So overall, we can see that this is a losing trading journal. He has a net return of minus 2000 pounds. Overall, this gives him a negative ROI of minus 2.96%. It's not a big drawdown, but it's definitely a losing journal. And let's see what we can find out about this journal and how we can help this trader move forward with the right action plan. To analyze the discipline, we can always go to our journal and we look at the tilt meter. And the tilt meter is really here a mixed bag. We have a neutral tilt meter, we have green tilt meters and also some red tilt meters. So it seems to be all over the place. To get a better idea, let's go to our equity graph and we activate the tilt meter here. This brings the tilt meter in the background. What we can see is that his performance, the line graph, is negative, as we've seen already in the home tab, and the tilt meter in the background seems to be rising. So this seems to indicate that although he's making more good than bad trading decisions, and he's following his rules more often than not, his performance is still going down and he's still losing money. We need to analyze this further. What we can do is we go to our chart lab and we go to efficiency. And currently we see that the efficiency is at 62%. And this confirms that the trader is following his trading rules on 62% of his trading decisions. But on the other hand, he's breaking the trading rules on 40% of his trading decisions, which could be an issue for the trader. And let's analyze this further. We go to our trade comments and we are here at the trade entry comment. And what we can see is that when the trader is following his entry plans, he's making good profits there's a total profit of 1,685 pounds for the trader. And his trading journal has 92 trades where he followed the entry plan. Let's go to our equity graph and let's analyze this. So what we can do is that when we just look at the trades where he followed his trading plan, what would his performance be? So we go to the advanced filter, the entry comment, and then we only look at the trades where he followed the entry plan. What can we see now? His performance is suddenly positive. Let's change this to the ROI. And what we can see is that his ROI currently is 2.54%. So instead of a negative performance of minus 2.9, as we've seen in the beginning, now he has a positive performance. Sometimes when traders tag their trades, there could be also the influence of a hindsight bias, which means that when you enter the trades in your journal, often traders are more inclined to add a positive rating to a positive outcome. So when you say you have a winner, you're more likely to enter also a positive comment to the trade. And what we can see is here, we have a win rate of 57%. So it seems like the overall bias might not be too high because when we take out this comment and when we look at the whole trading data, we have a win rate of 50%. So we go from 50% to 57%. That's not a huge issue. But if you see that your win rate goes from 50 to maybe 80 or even higher, what we've seen in other journals, that could be a red flag. And this could mean that you are giving your trades a good entry comment because you're looking at the outcome and you're not truly looking at the process. But in this case, this doesn't seem to be an issue. Just to be on the safer side, let's also add this comment, not sure, because there might be instances where the trader is not sure if the trade followed his trading plan, but let's count him into this. And what we see now is that we are still having a positive performance. Granted, the positive performance is much lower now, 0.69%, but overall, the trader is still making money compared to before. So this is a really, really important finding, and we have to stress that. The trader seems to have a profitable strategy at the core. When he's following the trading rules, he is making money. And when he's not following the rules, he is losing money. That's a really important finding. 
And the difference in the performance is here night and day. He goes from losing to suddenly profitable trading when he's able to follow the rules. But let's dig deeper and let's look what else we can find about this journal. In the next step, we're going to do a risk analysis of the trading journal. Here we want to check if the trader is over leveraging, if he's taking large losses and if he has inconsistencies in his risk management. To analyze the risk, we go to our risk distribution and we can see this is a great graph. You don't have any outliers to the downside. You also don't have any outliers to the upside. So it means that all of the trades seem to be following a very steady and very rigid risk management plan. And his position sizing is spot on. There are no deviations from the position sizing as we can see here. All of the trades fall into this very narrow interval and he doesn't have any outliers. So no problem with the risk management. That's a great finding as well because it shows the traders very on top of his position sizing and risk management game. Another common issue that many traders are struggling with is mismanaging of their trades. And when we talk about mismanaging trades, this typically means exiting winners too soon or closing losses too late. And a lot of traders leave a lot of money on the table by inefficiently managing their trades. Now let's dig into trade management and how he places his trades with respect to take profit orders and also exits. And as we saw in the beginning, that's the question and that's the concern that the trader has. He's not quite sure what he should be doing, but he has a feeling that this is costing him the most amount of money and that's at the core of his trading problems. So first let's go to the trade management and what we can see here is great. The actual performance in blue is above the potential performance. That's a really important finding because it shows that the trader is not mismanaging his trades. Actually, he is making more money than what he could potentially realize if he would follow a passive approach, which means that he enters his trade, he sets the stop loss, the take profit target, and then just let the price play out. But by actively managing his trades as he's doing right now, he's making more money than what he could potentially do by just letting the price play out. So that's good. Trade management doesn't seem to be an issue for him right now. But let's get to the core of the question that the trader has. And for that, we are in the exit analysis. And here we should be able to find all the answers. So what we can see is that on all of his trades, he has an average updraw of 165% on his winners and 34% of his, on his losses. What does it mean? It means that in winning trades, the price is often overshooting his targets. And that could mean that the trader is setting targets that are a little bit too conservative. On the other hand, on his losing trades, the price doesn't even come close to the target, not even halfway, only 34% towards his target. That's a very interesting insight. Let's look at the drawdown. The drawdown analyzes how close is the price coming towards the stop loss. On his winning trades, the price only makes it 46% towards the stop loss. So just basically halfway towards the stop loss and then the price turns around and goes in the profit. And on his losses, you can see that the drawdown is exceeding 100%. So the price seems to very often hit the stop loss on his losses. The trader said in the beginning that he often ends up closing the trades well below the target. Is that true? When we look at the average exit of the winning trades, you can see the traders are on average exiting his trades at 76%, which means that on average he has 25% more to go towards the take profit target. So he is closing his trades slightly ahead of the target. What I really want to analyze is those trades that follow the entry rules. So let's go and look at those exclusively because those are the trades that follow his trading plan. The other ones are a little bit outside of his trading plan and they might skew the data. What we can see now is a little bit of an improvement. His average updraw is now 170% and on the average updraw on the losses is 40%. The average exit on his winners is 80%. So there's also a slight improvement when he's following his trading plan. Maybe he has more confidence or the trades in general are just better and he's following the rules much better. So what are the conclusions for the trader and how should he move forward? With a very high updraw on his winning trades, the trader could try to implement a more aggressive take profit approach, which means that extending his take profits or try to use a trailing stop loss approach to capture larger winning trades. Typically, this will also mean that by using a wider target, his win rate is going to go down a little bit. So that's a trade off that we often see. The further your target, the more likely it is that the price will turn around and the price will not reach the target. So that's a very important trade off that the trader has to keep in mind. On the other hand, his average drawdown on losers is very low, which means that the price when he is right is not coming too close towards his stop loss, only halfway. 
The trader could try to use a stop loss approach that is a little bit more aggressive as well, which means using a tighter stop loss on his trades. Again, this would typically result in having a lower win rate because now more trades will reach the stop loss, but this could also boost his reward to risk ratio and help him realize larger winning trades because of that. It's important to keep in mind that by changing stops and targets on your trades, this will completely change also the dynamics of your win rate and your reward to risk ratio. So this has to be done with care and gradual. You want to start slow and then see how this will affect your trading performance over time. You don't want to make any drastic implementations. You want to really do this gradually to see if this is really an improvement. In the next step, we want to look for negative outliers in the trading performance. And those are the largest underperformers for the trader. The great thing about identifying negative outliers is that by fixing just a few things, the traders can often see a significant improvement in their trading. So fixing negative outliers should be a high priority for the trader because it can often lead to significant improvements in the trading performance. So we go to the chart lab and then we go to trade setups. And first thing that really stood out here is that he has a lot of setups. He has a total of 23 setups that he trades. So that seems quite a lot. And what we have seen is that traders who have many different setups, many different strategies, and many different ways how to define an entry are often getting easily confused because they have so many things that they have to juggle in their minds at the same time. So many different rules, so many different parameters, and that might be mentally very tough for the trader. Another thing that I noticed is that he has a lot of notes in his journal. So pretty much all the trades seem to have an entry note here. And by going through the different notes on the trades, what I saw is that he seems to not have a lot of confidence in his trades and he's often unsure about what to do and what the right thing to do is. And by looking at his stop loss and it take profit, I could have helped him already a little bit. But another thing to consider is maybe try to narrow it down. Focus on a few setups in the beginning. Don't try to spread yourself too thin and don't overwhelm yourself with too many rules, too many systems that you need to keep track of. Another interesting thing is that once we go to our advanced filters, and again, we only want to look at the trades that followed the rules, it changes quite significantly. Now you can see his performance looks much better and he has some setups that are really overperforming and are responsible for the majority of his winners. There are also a lot of setups where he almost doesn't have any trades. So maybe the trader can also consider to just remove a lot of the setups that he's trading right now and only focus on the ones that he feels comfortable with and that are making money currently. That will help the trader to streamline his process, to focus only on a few things and really become the expert in just a few setups instead of trying to master everything at once. And especially since the trader said that he doesn't seem to have an idea what is going on and he doesn't really have an idea of what to do, that could also help the trader with his confidence and his overall approach to trading. So what is going well for the trader? I would say that overall, currently his performance is negative. He can be pretty confident about his trading. Again, when we just look at the trades that follow his rules, he would be making money and his performance is actually quite good, especially here in the last recent 40 to 50 trades. In the beginning, he traded a little bit all over the place and more around the break even, but then he seemed to pull it together and he made a lot of good trading decisions. In the recent past, he seemed to have topped out a little bit. I wouldn't be too surprised if this is also due to the overall confusion or the uncertainty that the trader is currently battling with. By removing the uncertainty and by having a more clear action plan on how to move forward, that could probably help the trader as well turn his trading around, trade with more confidence overall, and have a much clearer approach to his trading. And finally, we want to take a look at the progress the trader has made and whether he is on track and how his trading is developing over time. Looking back at how far you have come can often be a great confidence boost and identifying the actual progress in your trading can help set new impulses and help you move forward with more confidence. Finally, let's look at his progress and we go to the report and then the monthly progress. And what we can see here is a breakdown of his trading performance by the different month. Something that really stood out right away is that in March, when he had the fewest trades, only 14 trades, he made a lot of money. This is the only month that performed positively. On all the other three months, he lost money. And fewer trades led to a much, much better performance for the trader. That stands out right away and we have seen it in the last trading journal review as well. When traders make fewer trades, often their performance is much better. Out of curiosity, again, let's look at the trades only where he followed his trading rules. 
And what you can see is that three out of four months would now be profitable. Only in the current months he would still lose money overall. But you can see the other three months look great, he has a much better win rate and his average P&L is also very positive. March really stands out here with 12 trades where he followed his trading rules. The total profit is very high. The net return is 1.95%, a very high win rate. So the trader can focus on what he did there. Those are the trades that follow into the month of March and that's what he should be doing. So let's sum this up. When we look at the initial comment of the trader in the beginning, we can see that definitely might be something to the concerns and to the opinions of the trader. He might be able to use stops that are a little bit closer, targets that are a little bit more aggressive. But this wouldn't be the first action step. And that's also probably not the thing that will help the trader make the most progress. At the core, we saw that when the trader is following his trading rules, independently of his exit plans and independently of stops and targets, he would make money by just following the rules. His core system, when he's following his trading rules, is making money long term. And that is the most important finding for the trader. What we have seen with other journals is that traders might prefer to see that it's the strategy that is to blame. This will slightly shift the responsibility away from the trader and puts it on the system. And by just tweaking a few parameters, the traders believe that they can just turn their negative performance into a positive one. More often than not, and also in this case, we have seen that the problem seems to be the trader himself or herself. The trader is breaking his rules, which is responsible for the loss overall in his journal. If the trader would be able to follow the rules, he would be a profitable trader by now. Of course, it's much easier said than done to tell the trader just to follow his trading rules and stop breaking it. But when you look at the data and when you see black on white, that actually you would be able to make money if you just follow the rules, we have seen this can give traders a lot of confidence to move forward. So this was a really interesting journal review. We were able to identify specific areas in the trading journal that are underperforming, some are overperforming, and we were able to give the trader a clear action plan to go forward. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you want us to review your journal in one of the next videos, go to edgewonk.com review. We look forward to hearing from you.